Okay, uh, so this is uh, Psych 3280, Neural Basis of Consciousness. Um, this is a week five lectures. And uh, 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 this week I'll uh, explain eyes, our visual system and uh, consciousness. So let's get started with a recap of uh, last week. Uh, in the week four, um, we learned um, masking in the, uh, in the first uh, part of the lecture. So the masking is the spatial temporal context uh, that alters the appearance of some stimuli and that makes it difficult to, or impossible to experience. So this is a sandwich masking that Stan Dehan used uh, on the left side um, because of the blank uh, before and after the uh, target letters. Uh, you can see it very clearly, but if it's sandwiched by the uh, jumbled mask, temporary, you cannot see this uh, masked letter very well. And uh, uh, various objective behavior tests are available to uh, verify the visibility of the uh, stimuli. So here is the summary of their behavior, sti uh, behavior paradigm, stimulus detection, word naming, and recognition memory, and first choice paradigm. And uh, all basically uh, points to the fact that the visible world was very uh, uh, visible and consciously perceived, whereas the uh, masked world was not consciously perceived at all. And yet, uh, neural responses for strongly masked stimuli are weaker and short-lived, but still present, whose behavioral consequences can be demonstrated by a sensitive paradigm such as priming. So the uh, location of the special location of the areas that were activated by the, uh, this weekly masked, uh, weekly experienced uh, masked stimuli were similar to the visual world, uh, but uh, much uh, less extended in terms of uh, space and also the amplitude was much um, smaller. And uh, that lead, uh, led to our uh, next question of uh, uh, do mask stimuli induce blindside-like behavior, uh, blindside-like phenomenology? So to address that, we looked into a bit more careful, uh, carefully about the visual uh, behavior of the blindside patients and the monkeys. In the second part of the lectures, and first I uh, explained that the V1 lesion monkeys show the same visually guided behaviors as blindside patients. And uh, um, these behaviors are qualitatively different from those elicited by threshold of mask vision. So the, the left side is a, a typical um, brain lesions that are induced in these blindside uh, monkeys that are much well uh, controlled and confined within the V1. Uh, unlike the patients. And then uh, this uh, central figure shows the eye movement accuracy. So they are able to move their eyes to the location of the um, stimulus, but uh, generally the um, accuracy of the uh, behavior was very um, bad compared to normal vision. And then uh, on the right side, uh, we show that the uh, performance of the blind patient in this case, um, in their uh, uh, wagering uh, task uh, performance. In terms of the type one performance, uh, which is the objective measure of their accuracy, um, they are much better than zero, uh, the, the chance in terms of D prime, but uh, in terms of their metacognitive accuracy, how well they can actually uh, utilize their behavior for maximizing behavior, uh, uh, rewards, they are pretty close to chance. And that led to uh, the conclusion that the information that guides blind side behaviors is not consciously um, accessible. And then um, at the third uh, part of uh, the uh, week four lecture, we started to introduce um, the structure of the eyes. And based on the anatomical structure of the retina, or we can predict our phenomenology should be something like at the fovea would be a blue blind and also at the periphery it should be a color blind and uh, i made a, a couple of the demonstration and then i asked you guys uh, to see whether these uh, uh you know prediction would be met according to your experience using uh, after effect uh, for the blue blindness and also um color blindness on the you know left side of it, uh, this you know um demonstration and we'll revisit it again. Okay, and uh, we'll examine this further in this week. So uh, this week, uh, learning objectives are the following. 
First, uh, we'll ask what is our peripheral visual experience like, again, uh, with a bit more detail. And then second, what do theories about uh, visual consciousness actually say about our peripheral visual experience? And then uh, how can we explain uh, the properties of our visual consciousness based on the architecture and the mechanism in the visual system? That's a, a third question. And then the fourth, uh, we are going to ask what are the hierarchical structures of the visual system? And then uh, ask uh, what source of information supports the blind sight's uh, visually guided behaviors after the beyond lesions? And then finally, this week, uh, why blind side patients lose visual consciousness after V1 lesions in the end? Can the properties of the V1 explain this loss of consciousness? That's the final question. And as a reading material, I suggest a quest for consciousness chapter three, which has been already suggested the last week, and then four and eight. Uh, chapter five to seven are optional. Uh, and if you're interested, please read it, but um, not necessary to answer questions in the uh, exam and so on. 